as you're probably aware, a half cent sales tax on the November 5th ballot in Jackson County is asking voters to help fund translational medical research. It's an unusual tax in that it doesn't fund parks, public safety, or other things that are normally funded by sales taxes. On Friday's Week in Review, we'll spend the entire program debating the issue. One of the institutions that would benefit from the tax is UMKC, which would receive 20% of the take. KCPT healthcare reporter Todd Feedback visited UMKC to show you the kind of product that can result from translational research. Before we discuss the November 5th ballot issue, let's talk about cement or goo. It's billion dollar goo on my fingers right now, billion dollar goo. And Graduate student Rachel Weiler is showing us a new bone cement being developed by Dr. Linda Bonewald at UMKC. Each year, more than a million Americans undergo joint replacement surgeries such as hip or knee replacements. And as our baby boom generation ages, that figure will increase dramatically. The potential market for a new cement is huge. Right now, it's dominated by a product that has been around for decades. They used to use it back in the 1940s. To, plastic surgeons used to uh, use it to fill uh, skull gaps. The cement is used to attach an artificial joint to existing bone, as demonstrated here on a knee joint. Artificial knee components and plaster them down to the ends of the bone and anchor it with the help of bone cement. These bone cement are mixed on the back table by the scrub nurse. With only incremental changes being made to the cement that has been used for so long, it begs the question as to why a new product is even needed. The cement commonly used for these procedures damages the surrounding bone, causing pain and requiring additional procedures. Uh, one of the major things is the exothermic reaction cement really has. It raises the temperature of the tissues to 82 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than the critical temperature of denaturation of the proteins in the body. So even though cement becomes super hard and anchors the prosthesis down, it will also cause damage to the surrounding tissues. We are developing a new bone cement without these damaging side effects. This, it's actually not toxic to cells, and it may promote bone growth. We haven't been able to look, look at that, but bone cell growth. And so this would be really exciting because it'd be something that would actually replace something that's been on the market for 40 years. Whether this product will deliver as researchers hope it will remains to be seen. But the bone cement is just one example of taking research out of the lab and moving it to the patient, which is the very definition of translational research. So now, back to the decision that Jackson County voters are being asked to make on November 5th. The 20-year, one-half-cent sales tax would create an umbrella organization called the Institute for Translational Medicine of Jackson County, which would oversee the distribution of the tax proceeds. This tax will pay for medical researchers and their expenses, and if it passes, it will trigger a $75 million donation from Donald J. Hall and the Hall Family Foundation. This would pay for the construction of a building at Children's Mercy Hospital to house the Translational Medicine Institute of Jackson County. Opponents say that any tax increase would be better spent on public safety and other basic services. They also don't think that the $40 million a year the tax may raise is enough to really be a game changer, and that the institutes that support the tax should work harder to get funding from sources other than the taxpayers in one county. Lawrence Dreyfus is the Vice Chancellor for Research and Economic Development at UMKC and a proponent of the tax. It really is a transformative uh, moment in Kansas City. and. Uh, you know, it's extremely short-sighted to say uh, that an extra half-cent sales tax, uh, is, is it really worth it? I think you have to ask the question, uh, like it has been said, is it good for families? Is it good for the children? Is it good for uh, the, the health of our community? And in my estimation, the answer to all of those is yes, it's tremendously good. Backers of the tax say it will cost residents about $60 a year or $1,200 over the life of the measure. Voters will decide on Tuesday, November 5th, if they want to shell out that kind of money for translational research. Reporting for KCPT News, this is Todd Feeback. Remember, we'll dissect the research tax with proponents and opponents on Kansas City Week in Review tomorrow night at 730